Hello everyone, this is Tom Fox. Welcome to episode 20 of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. I'm the, also the author of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics blog, uh, the ebook GSK in China, A Game Changer in Compliance, and two hardbound books, Lessons Learned on Compliance and Ethics and Best Practices under the FCPA and UK Bribery Act. Today it's my distinct pleasure to have as our guest Maurice Gilbert. Maurice runs the site Corporate Compliance Insights, but today I wanted to visit with him about his other job, one might even say his real job, which is as the head of Concilium. Concilium is a search service that specializes in compliance positions. Maurice has been doing this for quite some time. And the reason I wanted to or asked Maurice to join us for this episode is I think uh, many people have questions about how does a job arise? How do I apply for the job? What are the things that companies are looking for? What are the things that a recruiter's looking for? And if there's one person that knows the answers to all that, it's Maurice Gilbert. So, Maurice, it's my distinct honor to uh, have you on the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. And I would just like for you to explain to uh, our listeners and those who are viewing this, uh, how does it all happen? Thanks, Tom, for the introduction. Uh, first off, when you're asking how does it all happen, typically I, I think you're asking how do we initially get a search assignment? Yes. That is typically a function of a client reaching out to us through the reputation that we've developed as doing compliance search all over the world. Uh, inclusive of this year alone, we've done 20 international searches as far away as China, Singapore, and Latin America. Uh, after a search uh, or a client comes to you with a search or a potential search, what's your next step? The most critical point uh, to start with is what we call a kickoff meeting. And that would be inclusive of once we have uh, a job description which is typically written by the client. We study that and we formulate questions and we have a kickoff meeting with the client in their office and that meeting usually lasts about two hours and the attendees from that meeting are usually the hiring authority and perhaps an HR professional and it is our job to have a dialogue to find out and develop further criteria for the profile that we're going to develop. And we basically develop a profile in conjunction with the uh, client. And that's done through a series of questions. Because typically, there's a shortfall in a job description. It has a laundry list of we need X, 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 X. And the shortfall is in that type of approach is you're not getting at the heart and soul of what will that person be doing and what is the expectation of that professional the first 12 months. So typically that's one of the key questions we ask, which is what do you want this person to have accomplished within the first 12 months? And that's more of a reality check as to the profile that we're looking for. Do you find that uh, clients have not really thought through the process that you've described and they really don't understand as well as you think they might need to uh, the type of candidate they're looking for or even indeed the parameters of the job description? Well, it, that's a great question. And that is the case. Uh, it's not necessarily thought, uh, totally thought through and that's where we come in because we ask a series of questions uh, and that's why the kickoff meeting will last easily two hours because we're asking lots of questions about expectations and uh, these questions really need to get to the heart and soul of what are we going to look for when we go to market and, and that's not something that is typically uh, thought through to the nth degree like we need to do it from our perspective to deliver the quality candidate that the uh, client is looking for. And we have to sift through some things that may be very arbitrary in nature, 
like oftentimes a, a client may say to us, we need an attorney. Well, sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. But we have to ask that question. Why are you making uh, an attorney uh, a key criteria for this professional? And sometimes there's a good response, like we expect this person to be conducting investigations and we believe that type of a legal background facilitates that. But there are times when being an attorney uh, adds no value proposition to the, the profile that we're looking for. And we have to sift through that and flush that out. After the completion of the kickoff meeting, what's the next step for Concilium? The next step for Concilium is we take that information and we huddle up with our colleagues and internally at Concilium and we ask ourselves, okay, where are we most apt to find the profile that we're looking for? Uh, sometimes certain things are rather easy, like if we're working with one of our pharmaceutical clients, typically that professional needs to come out of a pharmaceutical environment. Not always, but typically that's the case. But you get into a myriad of other issues like logistics, are they willing to relocate, uh, language issues, like especially on our foreign searches, uh, we did a search in Russia recently. Of course, that professional had to speak Russian in addition to English, which is the corporate language. So when we're doing international searches, every professional must speak English uh, and write English, but they're expected typically to speak a native tongue, whether they're in Russia, China, Latin America, etc. How do you take the opportunity to market? Are you talking about market, going to market to find the professional that we're looking yes. for? Um, that is a, a multi-layered uh, approach. Uh, of course, because we specialize in placing compliance officers throughout the world, we have a massive database of professionals to begin with. But it's a starting point. So when we get a search, we, um, we start to message and call people, let's say, in our database. And we start to qualify them. Are they appropriate and are they available and desirous of taking a look at our client's opportunity? Uh, if they're not, we'll ask for a referral. And we have the ability to get referrals because we know people. You can't very well approach someone you don't know and say, oh, by the way, let me know three people that might be qualified for an opportunity. You must have built a relationship based on trust to earn that right to ask for a referral. And those are typically forthcoming. And the other thing that we have, which is very, very unique, no one else has this, is our search firm, as you know, uh, um, owns the publication Corporate Compliance Insights, which is read by over 40,000 professionals throughout the world every month. And these are professionals that are typically compliance officers, legal counsel, people who are very fluent in compliance in one way or the other as far as their job. And we have the ability to do our messaging and tap in to people uh, that read our publication. Uh, after you've taken the opportunity to market, uh, there would be some a period of time where you're assessing potential candidates. Uh, what information do you take back to the client when you have determined a list or a category of potential candidates? How, what's that process like? Well, the process itself is a combination of presenting the professional CV but we actually have our hiring authority um, on the phone or in person, and we're walking that hiring authority through the value proposition associated with that particular candidate. We have bullet points from our notes of the interview of that professional, uh, typically uh, readily available, uh, and we're prepared to answer in-depth questions such as, 
Why is this individual sufficiently motivated to even take a look at our opportunity? So these need to be addressed and our interview with a potential candidate typically is from one hour to two hours in length. So we're capturing all these data points beyond what you could see in a CV. Uh, one of the things that I've experienced uh, with Concilium that I have not experienced with other search firms is you work very closely with the candidate in preparation for the on-site interview, or uh, I guess perhaps you could have an online or, or um, video interview, but you work very closely with the candidate. Can you explain that process and how that works? And more importantly, why is that so important for a candidate's potential success? Well, it's like any other business meeting you and I would prepare for. And that's what we say to our candidate. This is a business meeting. It's called an interview. You could call it whatever you want. It's a business meeting. Would you ever go into a business meeting unprepared? No, I wouldn't, right? So that's the starting point. And once we convey the significance of preparing, then there's usually the realization that, yes, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, that work would entail uh, uh, clearly evaluating the, uh, the website, let's say, of our clients. Uh, our clients are usually large Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies, so there's a plethora of information out there. Okay? That's a starting point to get uh, a feel for the company, who they are, their products, services, etc. And then there's also a, a ton of information that one could capture as to, let's say, certain vulnerabilities that they may be facing with compliance. And again, through research, that information is readily available. We may also have some information that has been provided us to give the, the candidate an idea as to uh, where uh, the client may be most sensitive relating to compliance issues. Now that's one aspect of the preparation of knowing the client and the situation that they find themselves in. The other component, of course, is you have to do a tremendous job as, quote, selling yourself as the solution. And this is very awkward for most professionals because salespeople, in contrast, are accustomed to bragging on themselves and they're accustomed to talking this way, developed a new sales territory that resulted in two million more in revenue. That's impressive. The rest of us who are not directly in sales, we tend to drone on like this. I'm responsible for this and I'm responsible for that and I'm responsible. So what's the takeaway? Well, you're a very responsible person, but it begs the question, what are you going to do for me? What's your value proposition? So we have to educate and reorient a candidate to say, to speak in value propositions. Did such and such that resulted in fill in the blank. And if you're not prepared to speak that way, then your presentation is going to be less than optimum. So that that's a very key, key aspect of, of uh, the presentation by the candidate. And there's another very important tool as well, which is asking lots of questions from the candidate's perspective. So I went to the doctor last week. The doctor says, where does it hurt? What are the symptoms? Let me do a physical exam. Your quintessential, as you know from law school, Socratic method. Ask questions, get the answers, and respond. That's what we need to do when we're in an interview situation as well, to be very, very on target with the interviewer, because it's all about connecting. And, and what people don't readily know is about 20% of a hiring decision is based on pure technical proficiency the 80% on connecting, connecting, connecting. And that's where we coach our candidates tools to further that connection because they're already very verbal. Another thing I've heard you talk about is energy level. 
Can you explain uh, why energy level is important in an interview? Well, it's important in every aspect, not just an interview. Well, could you specify but, then on the interview? But in the interview, of course, it's like you and I in this conversation, we feed off of one another's energy. So if I'm flat, you know, it's going to be kind of a downer. Plus, you know, in the positions we fill, you have to be able to sell concepts, sell ideas. You cannot successfully pull that off if you have a very low energy level. You have to bring some great energy. People feed off of that. And that's the first thing that they're going to be attentive to. If you don't have that, they're never going to hear the words. Uh, Maurice, we're near the end of our time, and so I'd like to end with uh, asking you a question of a little bit different focus. You've been doing uh, this type of business for quite some time. One of the uh, longest and, and leaderist, if that's a word, uh, search firms in the compliance industry. Are there any general trends that you've seen over the past few years that you could share uh, with our audience? Trends in co uh, compliance hiring or uh, companies looking for a specific type of compliance officer, really anything out there that uh, you've noticed? The biggest thing that we notice is the desire to get into the emerging markets. That's the biggest trend. So it's not doing something functionally different or looking for different profiles necessarily, but it's getting into the emerging markets. So not only have this year, let's say, have we done searches in Russia, but we've also done searches in um, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. This was unheard of years ago. These were markets that, you know, you didn't, weren't serviced by a dedicated compliance officer. But as we navigate through and build up compliance and try and button up risk, you're getting into these smaller markets that are very high risk stakes. So that, that's a trend we're seeing. Maurice, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, uh, could you share with them uh, the email address they might be able to reach you at? Sure. It's simply maurice at concilium.com. And Corporate Compliance Insights, is that corporatecompliance.insights.com? Absolutely. Uh, for those of you who do not check out that site, you should. It is probably, in my mind, the best resource for uh, up-to-date articles on compliance from perspectives such as mine, from the legal, from audit, from finance, from HR, from a wide variety of perspectives. Uh, additionally, uh, Maurice has uh, a large number of job postings on that site. There are other information that you can use in your compliance program. It is really one of the treasures of resources, and it's all free available to the compliance practitioner. Maurice, I really appreciate you coming on the show, and thank you very much. Thanks, Tom.